Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guest today is author Larry Baker from Iowa City. Larry, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Great to have you here. Larry, You've, uh, I think uh, Harry and Sue is your seventh, sixth or seventh, seventh book? Seventh novel that I've published. I've written God all. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but you, uh, you know, uh, Flamingo Rising was made into a movie some years ago. Your name is on the Iowa City Literature Walk, people step on you every day. No, I'm not on the walk. I'm yeah. on a bookcase right oh. next to the uh, the old Press Citizen building. Oh, okay. So they have to. They can come by and pee on me. Okay. But they can't actually walk. Okay. Well, me. there, you, there you go. That that maybe that's it's, a better situation. A <laughs> and Harry and Sue yes, is sir. your is your new one, mm-hmm. uh, and you've got uh, you've got some events coming up at the time that we're taping. You are headed uh, in a in a week or so, in just a few days, you are headed back home. To Oklahoma. Oklahoma, where the story takes place. Right. In fact, I used to, the story takes place in the old Center Theater in downtown Oklahoma City, which I used to be the manager of um, before most of your listeners were born. Um, so, and I used to see ghosts at that place, and this is a ghost story, and among other things. <coughs> so, yeah, it'll be a, a homecoming of sorts. So Tulsa, uh, Tulsa, which was the home of the, the drive-in, which, which became Flamingo Rising, and... Oklahoma City, where the Center Theater is, which is the home of Harry and Sue. Uh, your, you know, those formative experiences, it's kind of funny. You get to be, you know, you get to be our age. Uh, oh, you mean our late 30s? Yeah, exactly. Well, right. that's my point, is yeah. <laughs> it seems like, you know, no matter how how old we get, you you go back oh, to those to those formative experiences mm-hmm. as you know as you know, I've, you know, I've and written it, some books too. As and, a writer, you steal yeah. shamelessly from your past. right. Because it's yours. Yeah. Uh, so you were you managed theaters, mm-hmm. uh, movie theaters, owned some movie theaters in owned, Oklahoma for years and years. Owned in Oklahoma, the University of Oklahoma. And then eventually moved to Iowa. What was it that brought you to Iowa? Uh, I was finishing up graduate school. And uh, I'd gotten my master's from Oklahoma. Had to go somewhere else. Had three choices, Iowa, Indiana, or North Carolina. My wife wants warm weather. She picked North Carolina. We went there <laughs> in three weeks. We realized we had made a mistake, and we had to stay a year. So by 1980, I got back in the Iowa program, and basically have been here ever since, except for a sort of three-year uh, loss of sanity when I moved to Florida and moved back. Uh, now, I don't want to generalize too much, but I think <laughs> I think of you as a literate, a literary fiction fellow. Yeah. Uh, and Harry and Sue is definitely a fantasy. Well, it's the the old story. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl, and then supposedly boy gets girl back. But in this case, it's complications because uh, he gets her back, but it's not what she was before. So most of your listeners, I'm sure, I'm, I'm being very optimistic here, are familiar with the Harry Chapin song, Taxi. Um, Harry's a, a taxi driver, and he lost his love, and then one rainy night in Frisco, she gets in the cab, and it's the song about their meeting again. So I took that basic plot and applied it to my life in the movie theaters and added hundreds of ghosts, including the ghost of Marilyn Monroe and Harry Chapin and Harry Houdini and Will Rogers and Mark Twain and Patsy Cline and Karen Carpenter and all sorts of, other, you know, Ella Fitzgerald, all sorts of other ghosts. And the ghost becomes sort of the main characters of this story of Harry trying to get Sue back again. So the Harry, there are lots of Harrys in the story, but they, the Harry is Harry Chapin. Um, no, the, the, the Harry and Sue, Harry is the taxi driver named Harry Mason. Okay. All right. So, so Harry is, a, so, so this is, this is the, we're retelling the, the fictionalized story. Alive sir. Characters. Gotcha. Okay. And what he was, he meets the ghost of Harry Chapin and, um, there are all sorts of other ghosts named Harry, and that's part of the complications. He's running around a world of Harry Houdini, Harry Ducharme, a radio talk show host that nobody ever sees. They just hear his voice, and he's sort of the, the Greek chorus to this whole story. And um, so Harry Mason's alive, Sue is alive, but everybody else is dead, and he's just living in a world of ghosts. You spent a lot of time on the Marilyn Monroe character, and you have a much different take on her than than kind of where she lives in pop culture for us. Yeah, uh, if you if you only had the recent 
portrayals of Marilyn in popular culture, she would become the sort of the poster child for victim of Hollywood, poor, exploited, used, helpless, can't take care of herself, loving, but, you know, basically manipulated. I completely rewrote that story. Uh, one, my research, she's much more complicated. She's much more to her than that Hollywood victim cliche. And so I also have this theory that if you're dealing with ghosts, ghosts come back, they're different. They have everything that they've learned in their life, but they're, they're free to be completely different as a ghost. And so when Harry, the narrator Harry, first meets Marilyn Monroe's ghost, it's a big party, and he sees this flying dot in the auditorium flying around, and this dot just sort of, and remember, there's a thousand ghosts in the audience. This dot flies around, and it pops right in front of his face, and it turns into Tinkerbell. And it's Marilyn Monroe as Tinkerbell, and it's like two inches tall. And then she starts talking to him, and then she flies away, comes back as Marilyn Monroe wearing the dress right out of Seven Year Itch. And she does this weird thing. She looks at Harry on stage, and she points at him, and then she twirls her finger overhead, and the entire theater freezes. And it's just Harry and Marilyn. And she walks over, starts questioning him, a series of questions to find out who he is. And then finally she says, oh, okay, we're going to work on that. We're going to work on making you a good man. And her voice changes. We all know the sort of breathy, sexy Marilyn Monroe voice. Well, in my book, she has two voices. She has that voice when she's dealing with the public, and she has a more mature, a woman's voice dealing with... The Norma Jean voice. Yeah, with the characters in the book with her private voice. And her private Marilyn is extraordinarily funny and witty and wise and comic figure, and she's a problem solver and she's a magician, and she basically is a person who lives in this giant library in the theater that nobody's ever seen. And she invites Harry Mason, the narrator, in, and they talk. And you, uh, you see a completely different version of Marilyn Monroe that you will find, I think, much more interesting than the cliche of Marilyn Monroe. Is there any other character that you feel like you really found a, you know, one of the, out of your, your famous ghosts that you found a different spin or had some oh, yeah. insight into that character that maybe uh, you think don't think that we see? With who you perceive. But it turns out there's a villain in the story, and the villain is the ghost of Harry Houdini. And Harry Houdini is a person who meets Harry Mason, the narrator, and keeps insisting that he's not dead, but he's dead. He, he keeps insisting ghosts don't exist, but they do exist because he's one of them. Harry Houdini in real life was a person who tried to debunk spiritualism. He tried to be, a, you know, I do tricks, but there's a rational explanation, so on and so forth. So he's in this world, and he's the villain. He's trying to undercut all the other ghosts and convince them that they're not real. And so something happens to Harry Houdini by the end of the book, which is, I think, poetic justice. And in other words, Harry Houdini is a fascinating character in real life. As a ghost, he's fascinating. <clears throat> but in the, as a ghost, he's a person who is not your friend. You're going to be, as I said at the time we're taping, going to be in uh, Oklahoma, back home, mm -hmm. uh, giving a reading, an author talk at the at a bookstore in Tulsa. But you also have a Prairie Lights appearance coming up. Prairie Lights, July the 16th, <clears throat> 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's a Sunday afternoon. And I specifically chose that day because that is the anniversary of the death of Harry Chapin, 1981. So I thought, you know, the, the book itself is a homage to, to Harry Chapin. Let's have this reading to also, you know, commemorate his death, early death. He died at like 38 oh, yeah, years old. Oh, yeah, he was so young. And, he, and the ghost of Harry Chapin in the book talks about that because Harry Mason, the narrator, is always asking these dead people, What's it like to die? And so each of these ghosts, Marilyn describes her own death in a way that you've never thought about before. Um, Will Rogers describes his death in the plane crash, Mark Twain, and Harry Houdini describes this, but then 
Harry Chapin describes his death, you know, in a car accident. And it's like, what's that like? What are you feeling at the time? Um, so, yeah, there are all sorts of guest ghosts dealing with their own death. Harry and Sue is the new novel by Larry Baker. It's published by Ice Cube Press, Steve Semkin's imprint. Steve Semkin, friend of the show, uh, who's uh, been on uh, on the show many times. So it can be available at uh, all the regular bookstores. You can also order it right from Steve. Yeah, you get it direct from Steve. You get signed copies from Steve. Um, but, you know, it should be at Prairie Lights. It should be at all the bookstores that you normally w- would. Um, you know, I hate to say the word, but you can even buy it on Amazon. Um, but buy it from Steve. But but yeah, if you can buy it, regardless. Yeah. Uh, well, it's uh, I as, as I said, I haven't had a chance to dig into it yet, but I've been looking forward to it for uh, some time, and hopefully by the time uh, Prairie Lights rolls around, I will have done that. And I, I'm real looking I hope forward you get to it. Down there because I'm trying to organize something very different for this reading, and I can't say what it is now because it's like whatever when I. But it's more than a reading. It's like a radio program. Oh, I'm trying to work out a deal where we actually do a radio show of one of the chapters. Oh, okay. All right, sign me up. I got a role for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again, uh, the reading of Prairie Lights is July 16th at uh, 3 o'clock. You can meet Larry and also find out a little bit more about this uh, secret project that he's uh, got going on. Uh, where can people, I mean, obviously you can go to icecubepress.com mm-hmm. to find out more, but uh, where can people find you online in addition to that? Well, I don't have a website myself. I'm on Facebook. Um, I, I've been told I'm too much on Facebook. I, it's, it's possible. I, I yeah. visit Larry on Facebook a lot uh, myself, so I knew this. Uh, because, you know, Steve is a small press, and he relies on his authors to promote themselves. And although I'm basically a shy person, as you all as you know, Dennis, um, I, I can talk about myself and, and do Facebook. Yeah, and well, it. and it, your, your posts are always a lot. Posts and pics are always a lot of fun. So yeah, uh, you're, you're, a, you're a fun follow. So follow him on Facebook. Uh, pick up a copy of the book. Uh, come see Larry at uh, uh, at Prairie Lights Books on the 16th, or if you're going to be in Oklahoma, you could uh, you visit him there. The 27th in Tulsa, the 28th in Oklahoma City, which is also my birthday. Oh, okay. Uh, I expect presents from that crowd. <laughs> um, and, oh, Beaverdale Books in Des Moines on the 18th of July. Oh, okay. A couple of days after uh, Prairie Lights. All right. And after that, I'm on the road, hopefully uh, nationwide in the fall. Good. Excellent. Well, Larry, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks, sir. Nice to see you in person as opposed to just on Facebook. And uh, Hard to I, believe that that I'm this young looking in person. So true. It's so true. true. So aren't we all? <laughs> Dennis, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1030 or download the podcast. Watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or using your favorite podcast player. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.